What's going on everybody, it's Dermot and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to bring you a Snap AR technology with Lens Studio, where I'm gonna be covering Lens Studio core UI features, adding 3D content, device tracking, and market tracking. So I'm really excited about today's video, so let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing that I would recommend that you do is download Lens Studio. You can go to ar.snap.com download, and there is a version for Mac OS and also a version for Windows. You're going to need Windows 10 64-bit or Mac OS 10.13 and above. There's also hardware requirements such as the processors that you're going to need, so just make sure that you go through that. Once you get it going, then the first thing that we're gonna see is we're gonna be seeing the templates. There's a big template gallery that they provide. So on the top left side, you're gonna see that we have different objects that we have already there for us. These were already created by the Lens Studio template, basically the default scene. And the first thing that you're gonna see is you're gonna get a camera, right? And there is a preview on the right hand side. And this is basically like the render version, the simulation version of what we're going to be creating in AR. And the reason why I have a home is because there's different options in here, which I'll cover in the next few minutes. But I wanna focus on this area. So the camera is gonna be here. You're gonna get a scene object. There's also a different map. There's some objects that are displayed in here. So let's say that you wanted to create, for instance, uh, a new object. So you can right click in here and create a scene object. If you're familiar with Unity, this is gonna be very similar to creating an empty game object. So once you do that, you can create something like this. We can say this is our Terran cube. And what I can do here is I can select anything in here and then just create another object. And that could create another empty object. So it's always going to be hierarchical. So another thing that we can do is we wanted to create a different object type. I can scroll down and look at all the different options, or we can just say, you know what? I want to create a box, which is going to be a mesh. And the reason why I put it inside parent cube is because I had that object selected. So just keep in mind that this is hierarchical. If I wanted to move this out, I can move it out by just left clicking and dragging outside the parent cube. If I want to put it back in, I can just drag it and drop it in there. Another thing that we can do here, we can search if I wanted to search for that. In this case, it doesn't make sense because I only have one object, but you can, you know, you can go crazy in here and create many, many different objects. There's also different filters in here that you can apply. If you had a physics body, it'll only show you physics body. In this case, I don't have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle back to all objects. And then they have different options in here. If you wanna change the view, you can do layer view. We can do render order view. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my default view. This one is different indicators that you can look at. I'm just gonna leave those at default, but you know, that they are available in there. So now that we have a box, let's go ahead and look at a couple of things. So I'm gonna use my middle mouse scroll option. If I go forward, it's gonna allow me to zoom in. If I go backward, it's going to allow me to zoom out. And you can see that these icons are changing, right? This icon here is a selection tool. This one, it's actually changing to like a zoom plus and zoom minus when I zoom out. But the idea is that these are kind of like manipulators of objects. And because I have the box selected, there's also another little window on the right hand side that has a lot of different options and this is very common towards you know applications that have a 3d view and kind of like an editor view so you'll see this in blender you'll see this in unity and a transform component it's a component that allows you to basically these are properties of this object right this object has a transform and this object is currently at the pivot position i'm going to rotate it around because i'm holding my keyboard all key and then on my mouse i'm holding the left click and basically just moving my mouse around so that I can pan around the object. So what I can do here if I wanted to change this to, let's say I wanted to move this five centimeters on the X axis, I can hit enter and set it to five, or I can go back and set it to zero. I can do the same thing on the Y axis. We can do this and set it to 10. I can set it back to zero. And if I wanted to change the rotation same way, let's say that I do 45 degrees on the X axis, or maybe we wanna just move it slowly, you know, down. We can use these arrows to go up and down, or we can just, just set it back to zero. The same thing with scale, if I wanted to scale this box, let's say that I wanted to scale it five centimeters on the X axis. Now we have, you know, more of like a rectangle. So we can change it back. They also have this scale indicator here, which is, I believe is going to constrain and we can set it back to one. Let's go ahead and constrain it. And now we can just change this property and it's going to apply 
to all different accesses, which is really helpful, right? So let's go ahead and change it back to one. So we have it one, one, one. There's also a render mesh visual that got generated because I created this box and it has a mesh. And if I click on it, you're gonna see that there's a box in here. The reason why there's also a box in here is because this is the resource area. And this is more, think about like your uh, reference to files in the file system. This is more like what the actual Lens Studio is creating in its own application. And then right here is any additional properties about objects that we are playing with. For instance, if I wanted to create a, a script, this object doesn't know anything about the script. This script is in the file system, so it can say, this is gonna be my hello world. And that's normally what you'll create the first time that you work on a script. But anyway, so if I wanted to assign it, there's really nothing that it's going to apply this functionality, which there's really nothing in it right now. But let's say if I double click on it and we do something like print, we can say hello world and I can save it. Normally this will print in the logger on the bottom right hand side where my mouse is right now, but nothing is displaying, right? So if I wanted to apply that script, I can go here into box. I can add a component and this these are a lot of different components that you can add. You can do general, which is everything, phase, 2D, 3D, and physics, and so on. So let's say that I wanted to associate a script with this component. And the reason that we do that is because we want to apply behaviors to different objects that we have in our scene. So in this case, there's a script, but what script are we assigning? So I can go in here and I can say, you know what? I want to assign hello world. It's a little bit hard to see, but let me just move this up so that you guys can see it. You can see that there is a hello world being printed. And if I were to save the scene again, you're gonna see hello world print it one more time so now we know that this object has this script and that script has a behavior that gets applied on the on awake there's multiple events that we can actually execute depending on what we're doing so if we want to touch a screen if we want to tap then you know different things are going to trigger that script okay so what we can do now is let's go ahead and remove this we don't need this script and i'm going to go back into my box and this is how you can basically delete different components so and we go back to the default the other thing that we can also do here is we have a render mesh visual because we created a box in here through a mesh. And then you can also apply a material. You can also apply different shadows. So you can do a caster or a receiver. And we also can do a scheme. So now that you have that, let's say that we wanted to interact with this object. If you were to press W, you're gonna see that now we have the move tool. If I do R, now we can basically rotate this object. If I do E, we can also scale it. And you can see that the scale tool icon is currently selected. And I can go in here and and, and select the right and scale it manually. We can also uncheck this just to make sure that we can see all the different handles. If you go back in here, it's basically gonna constrain it so we can only see the middle one, but just make sure you have that unchecked before you do any, you know, any scaling. So in this case, I'm scaling on the X axis. So you can see that changing. This one I can scale on the Y axis. Or I can scale the whole box if I wanted to from the center pivot handle. I'm gonna go ahead and do control Z to go back. Another one that I thought was really cool was the isolate. So if you do all Q, it's going to just isolate on that object. So I'm gonna do W to go back into my moving tool. And the moving tool, by the way, you do the same thing. You add these handles, you basically left click on each one of the handles and then you can move that box. Or I can do also my all Q here and everything else went away, right? So if I do all Q again, then I isolate on this object or I can see all the objects in the scene. I can do the same thing here with my light. If I just wanna see the light, I can focus on the light and I can do all Q again to just show everything. Another thing that is really helpful and this is very common again with other applications is let's say that I wanted to focus on the box. So I'm gonna do left mouse click to select it. Then I'm gonna do F on my keyboard and you're gonna see that as soon as I do that, it zooms in to the box. I can scroll all the way back and then I can do F again and it's gonna zoom into that area. Another one that is really cool that I haven't seen is if you do A, it's basically gonna show you a frame of everything on the scene, which is, is actually really helpful. That way you don't have to scroll to a specific area. If you do this icon in here, it's gonna allow you to do what, what's called a multimedia preview. So if I wanted to move the box, you can see that the box is on her mouth, then towards her eyes, and then on the head. And if I wanted to do something like, you know, incrementing the box size to a rectangle, we're covering her head, 
Let's say you, you are creating a lens that it's going to be focused on her head. Maybe it's a hat. Then you can see that in the preview in here. We can also do other things. If you go back into here and do person, there's multiple people. So if we want to do person too, now we have a different person. And this is helpful for testing. So you don't have to deploy to the device every single time. And there's really no concept of deployment in Lens Studio. It's more about previewing in Snapchat. And I'm going to show you that as well. So if I want to do person five, we can do that. They also have, you know, animals that we can use. There's a cat in there. There's also a dog. And another thing that is really cool though, if you look at this icon here, this one is for photos. This one is for video. So if I wanted to see, you know, perhaps we can go here to a cat. You can see the cat moving. And this is helpful if you wanted to basically track the, the actual head of the cat and the head of the person. Maybe you put glasses on both of them. Then you can do a test in here without having to send it to a Snapchat. So this is going to be helpful for that. You can also go into this other option and this is going to give you kind of like a, a home walkthrough. So if I hit the W key, I can go forward. If I do S, I can go backward. If I want to do A, I can move to the left and D is going to move to the right. What I'm going to do is we're going to be using or access library. So let's go ahead and go into that. And in here you can do 3D. We're going to be using a lot of 3D objects that are available in Lens Studio. So we can scroll down until we find something that we like. I think I know which one I like, which is the mark in the city. And that one is by Snap. So we're going to go ahead and click on import. Okay, so it looks like you're already imported. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Go back into resources. And you can see that we have mark in the city prefab. And a prefab, it's a component that we can reference in the objects view. And then we can clone those components. And if we make a change to one, we can actually apply a change and broadcast it to multiple objects. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new scene object. And this one we can say this is going to be our environment so you can just call it environment and i'm going to drag and drop the mark in the city to my environment and as soon as i do that you're going to see that now we have this really cool looking environment there's also an environment you know render on the preview view and then what i'm going to do here is we can size it however we like remember this one is set currently to one so we can do maybe 10 10 and 10 and we can make it gigantic if we wanted to do that and i'm going to show you why i'm making that so big what we need to do now is now that we have this i also want to add device tracking so i'm going to go back into my camera we can collapse this we don't need that right now and there is a concept of different device tracking options so i'm going to go into my camera and add a new component and we can call it device tracking as soon as i do that the default tracking mode is going to be surface so we're going to go back in here i'm going to press s so that we can zoom out and we can select like maybe a different area if we wanted to select a different area we can go back in here and i want to focus i think the one that i did was going to be the beach okay so now i change this to 10 10 10 and i also change the device tracking to surface if i want to do rotation which means that this is helpful for things when you're placing different objects around the phone so if you're going to be staying in the center and you're not going to be moving towards the object that you're placing then you want to use tracking mode rotation Surface is for things where you're going to be placing an object on the surface and then you want to move towards the object or you want to move around the object. And then world, it's going to be similar to surface except that you don't have to focus on the surface to be able to, to use device tracking capabilities. But if we go back, I think I'm going to be using surface. Use native AR is really helpful if you want to, you know, for instance, use the native capabilities of AR, which is in this case, let's say that we're using an iOS device, then AR kit will be some of the features that this device tracking is going to be using and for Android is going to be AR Core. I think Surface and leaving this as unchecked is going to be just fine. So other things that I wanted to do here is I also wanted to add shadows and there's multiple ways to add in shadow. A component that I like and I use that you can do is we can say it's going to be for our shadows. I'm going to add a new game object and scene object. This is not Unity. And then what I can do as well here is we can say this is going to be a shadow and they have something called a shadow plane. Okay, so now that I have that, if you go back into your light though, and we have the option here to enable shadows. So as soon as I do that, we're not gonna see shadows yours yet. We're gonna see them inside the environment because I think some of these components already have the right properties. But let's say that I wanted to see it on some of these different components in here. So for instance, this one is currently doesn't have any shadow mode enabled. So if I wanted to do shadows, I can do this one as a caster. You can see that now we have a little shadow in here. We can do that perhaps with most of these objects. I think it should be okay. If it looks weird, we'll change it. 
we can select them all and then go here into caster and now we can see that now we have more shadows inside the environment and also on our actual shadow mate shadow plane if we go back into the light though and go down in here you're gonna see that the light is right in here so i'm gonna move it maybe a little bit up we can say that it's gonna be about a hundred and i think that's fine we can do e to actually rotate it the light is going to affect the character but not only that this is actually broadcasting the shadow so you can see that now it's going to apply shadows to these objects i wanted to do something like this because it looks more realistic if i make this one a little bit smaller we can do maybe about a 777 and now you can see that there's some shadows showing in there we can move it and just focus on that area and you can see how the shadows get applied in the preview mode so I'm gonna go ahead and go back here. We can probably exaggerate them a little bit there. And you can change the shadow color, that shadow density as well. If you wanted to make it a little bit darker, you can do that. And if you wanna blur it, you can also do that. I'm gonna do Control Z to undo that as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and pan around. And I'm gonna go into my city here and then look around. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and preview this in Snapchat. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan that. To make sure that I get the pair with Lens Studio. I'm gonna go ahead and hit pair. And as soon as I do that, this is gonna send the actual lens to my phone. You can see sending lens is currently in progress. So now we can go ahead and test it out in the actual device. As you guys can see, I can look at the monster city, move around, and this gives you a better idea of how the experience will look like in the device. I want to add functionalities to be able to move it around, rotate it, and basically manipulate this environment. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a box. So this is going to be kind of like our selection area. So we can just say selection area. And then in here, we can add a new component, which is gonna be just the box. And even though the box, it's going to basically be rendering right here, I'm going to be adding a material to be able not to render it so that we, we don't have to see the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it right about the size of the environment. So I'm gonna create a new material and we can do the, you can go into the materials tab and then it'll show you all different materials they currently have. We can do a simple PBR. I think that it's going to work just fine. And then we can go here and then make sure that we assign that material. And now we just see a big box. And even though it's rendering, we're going to make it so that it doesn't actually render. And then what I'll do here is I'm gonna move the entire environment inside the box. So we can also go into the material editing window which i'm gonna do by double clicking we're gonna get this really cool preview of all the different notes that made that material and then what i'm gonna do here is we can change i'm just gonna do alpha and then just remove the red green and blue and we can just say don't write the depth that way we can see the environment looks like that works and that's fine what about interacting with it right now we need to be able to move it around so we're going to go back into here into the actual box it has to be on the one that has a render mesh visual and i'm going to add a component called interaction we're going to do that and then i'm going to add the mesh visual this is going to be the area that we want to be able to select it's going to be our, our boxing here double click on it and this is going to tell it what the minimum touch size is going to be what the camera is going to be i'm pretty sure by default it just uses the camera that we currently have we don't need to do anything else and if you want to change the minimum touch size you can and then what i'm going to do now is we need to manipulate it right so there's a component called manipulate just go ahead and add it and if you want to add scale drag on rotation and change some of these properties you can you can set the minimum distance the maximum distance also the minimum scale and the maximum scale just in case if you don't want to make this gigantic you don't make it gigantic okay so now let's try to move it around so we can now move it around I'm gonna move it that way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test it on device and show you how we can scale it as well. So if we test it on device and I want to scale it, now we can test the gestures and then resize it. I can rotate it as well and place it in another area. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an image marker. So we can do the plus symbol here and just search for image. And we're gonna get the marker tracking and then go ahead and select image tracking. Then we're gonna be selecting the image marker that we want to use. It's recommended that you use something with a lot of detail and color so we can double click on it. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna see that now we have our image marker in the middle. And remember, this is in centimeters. So just make sure that the size of this is correct. If you look in the resources area here, this is currently set to 15 and you can change it to a smaller size if you wanted to by just changing this value. I think for me, I'm gonna do 15. I like it to be 
that big. And then on the preview window here, we can see that we have, you know, our image marker, which is gigantic, but I think that's fine. You can change the size if you like. Then if we go into image library, we can also scroll down and look for something that we like. I think I like the character, the monster character that I used before. Now we have this object in here that we can add instead of the image tracking. And if you notice though, this is currently not set correctly. Let me go ahead and make sure that this is set correctly. So if you look at the position of the monster, it's currently negative 40 on the Z. And I think that's okay. Let me just make sure that he is placed correctly. And then if I look at this guy, we can probably change it to about 90. So just to make sure that it is in the middle position of our image marker, otherwise things are gonna be offset. So if you have something on the wall, the actual marker needs to be rotated just to make sure that it is on, on an actual wall and if you have something on the flat surface then again just make sure you have it on the correct orientation and then once you do that all you need to do is if I go here and we can just move around until we have the marker and then we, yeah, we detected the actual image marker and we have our character in there moving which is actually pretty cool there's some other ones in here that you can test with and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect my, my webcam and show you how you can test this on an actual marker by using your webcam. So you guys can see that I am right here, right? So if I wanted to test the marker, you're gonna see that I have a marker in here. And if I move my phone around, you can see that the marker actually works. I changed the actual intensity of my phone just to make sure that the webcam could see the colors. Otherwise, it's really hard to see. But I can move this guy in the tracking is it's actually pretty pretty impressive so i think i'm gonna do a thumbnail like this <laughs> but you can move it around and yeah so the tracking is gonna work if i go offset then it needs to detect it now you can see how powerful lens studio can be for quick ar development thanks to the developer tools as well as literally no code required that we had to do so in the next video i'm going to be planning on covering object detection world mesh and depth texture features and if these videos are helpful to you please let me know in the comments because that's going to allow me to bring you more videos and also subscribe and hit the notification bell because you're going to be notified when the videos become available thank you very much guys